as I was growing up, climate change became such a dominant backdrop to how to think about the environment. Things like the Antarctic ozone hole and CO2 emissions and how it was a greenhouse gas and changing our planet in terms of warming. And the thing that we're studying most closely right now, we call it the other CO2 problem. This morning we're going to go ahead and dive right here off the pier and we're hoping just to do a beach dive and collect 10 or 15 red sea urchins that we're hoping to be able to bring back to the lab to do some ocean acidification experiments. What's going on with ocean acidification is that up until now, the world's ocean has absorbed something like a third of the CO2 that was released since the Industrial Revolution, and that's a lot. Now this CO2 dissolves into the surface waters of the ocean and literally alters the pH. So now what we're seeing is a little bit alarming because the pH of the ocean could change very rapidly. And we're not really sure that organisms have enough time to adapt to these rapid changes in ocean chemistry. We've collected two species of sea urchins. This is Strongylus trotus purpuratus, also known as the purple sea urchin. And this one here is the red urchin, which is Strongylus trotus franciscanus. As the oceans become more acidic, the carbonate levels are going to change such that they may affect organisms that rely on calcium carbonate to form their skeletons, like sea urchins. For example, the adults here, you can see that the, the spines are made out of carbonate, the test, which is the endoskeleton structure, and then even on their oral end, which is, this is their mouth, the teeth are made out of carbonate structures as well. The way CO2 affects the ability of marine calcifiers to make their skeletons is that the CO2 dissolves into the ocean, changes the chemistry, so that literally there are fewer carbonate ions around. And the carbonate ions, you can kind of think as like the building blocks for their skeleton. If they can't get those out of the ocean, they're not going to be able to build their skeleton as effectively. And it is this connection, the CO2 to the pH, reducing the availability of carbonate ion that makes it so difficult for them to make their skeletons. The goal of our research is to understand whether marine calcifiers like sea urchins will be able to make their hard parts, will they be able to make their skeletons in the oceans that we know are coming. All we do is mix gas and bubble it into our larval cultures, change the pH of the water by bubbling in CO2, and basically make future oceans right in our tanks down here. And then we ask the larvae to try to develop in them and show us what they got. What we're discovering is that the larvae develop so they're able to make their calcium carbonate skeleton, but that skeleton is shorter and they're just basically a little bit stumpier than they would be if they grew up normally. It's really hard to see these subtle differences when they're swimming and moving under the scope. So we collect thousands of images of lots of different individual larvae, and we do measurements on all their little hard parts. And most of the metrics are shrinking by about 10 to 15%. So what we think this says for sea urchins in general is that 
Although the larvae are able to make their little skeletons, this seems to come at a cost. An embryo only has so much energy to do its development, and one of the things we're learning is that they're becoming much more sensitive to high temperature. We've got an acidifying ocean, and we've also got an ocean that's warming. When we think about the ecology of this in a climate change context, what you end up with is sort of an ecosystem that's out of whack, it's out of balance. If we don't change the technology that we use right now and we continue to emit CO2 at the level that we're doing so, we're looking at an ocean that is much more acidic, we're looking at an ocean that has fewer organisms in it, and we're looking at a planet that will be completely changed in our lifetime.